Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If you are returning, thank you so much for returning. If you are new, my name is Greta. Thank you so much for coming here. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button and subscribe and then you can get more of my videos in your feed. I would love that. Okay, today's video. There are, it's January, it's a new year. There are definitely a lot of drops this time of year along with like March, this first quarter, there's a lot of drops. It's kind of that season. So yes, I'm going through a phase of wanting to enjoy older perfumes I haven't enjoyed in a while. I'm also returning to a lot of designers, some of them that were released, I've been picking up recently. And then there's a lot of designers launching that I have my eye on that I want to get. Some of them did just, did just launch already. Um, so I want to jump into this list of new releases and will I buy them or not. I don't know if all of them appeal to me, but let's take a look at them after this. Okay, let's jump into this list. I've been keeping this rolling list of new releases that I'm kind of got my eye on. Some of them I might need to try first. Some of them I think I might just go for it. Um, let's take a look. So the first one is uh, La Nuit Tresor Le Parfum version. And I think it actually dropped. So I am looking for that. I haven't seen it on the Lancome site. It is listed on Fragrantica as launched, but it would be weird that Lancome themselves don't have it, right? So if you know about the status on that, let me know. Um, but yeah, the notes, I have a lot of La Nuit Tresor. I have pretty much been buying them all in recent years and going backward and picking up others. I was late to the love. I kind of started, was like, ah, eh, and then skipped a few flankers and then kind of came back. And I have actually, for the past several years, have really liked the Lanoe Tresor collection. I guess because I always liked the original Tresor really loved it when I was younger, but never splurged on it. I, I just wasn't where I put my money. Um, and I miss that version. I feel like it's bastardized a little bit now because raw materials get banned and they can't use them. They have to come up with synthetics or, you know, avoid them and work around it. And it's just not the same. It was so good. It was so voluminous and powdery and peachy and so good, but unfortunately it's not the same and I just can't do that. So yeah, I definitely want to get this one. This one has a beautiful purple, like deep, rich purple velvet ribbon on it, kind of eluding to the speed of this. And it's in a beautiful purple juice. Top note is black currant. I mean, if you watch me, you know, I'm absolutely in love with black currant. It is one of my absolute favorite top notes. That is just the way to my heart is starting off with black currant. It's like, okay, you had me at, you had me at hello with black currant. It's just my thing. Absolutely love it. Um, when I see it, I kind of just buy it. It's just, it's my thing. It's my thing. I love black currant, a juicy, deep purple berry like fruit. That's juicy, um, syrupy, sweet, fruity, berry like, like, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So it opens with that. And then there's rose and there's cocoa and patchouli. Doesn't say, very much about notes. That's it. Those four notes are listed, but it's okay. I'm sold. I'm looking for it. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. I've been stalking every night the sites looking for it. Like, where is it? That's so weird. So people are making comments about comparing it to the Midnight Rose. Now, Midnight Rose is like a raspberry flanker. I don't know why they would be even assuming it would be like this because this isn't anything like those notes. But anyway, um, I love the DNA of La Nuit Tresor and Black Current. Yes, that I'm definitely going to get this one. Guys, when I do these back-to-back -back videos, I have to change something in my outfit or an earrings or something because then when I go to editing, I know what is from a different video. It sounds stupid, right? But that makes it really easy for me to identify. It's funny. I just, it's not like I care if I'm in the same outfit. All right, what's the next one here on my list? Oh, well, the House of Siage. I mean, they've been talking about Bugs and Tweety for a while now, killing me. I did try them on the cards. I tried Tweety. Did I try Bugs? I don't think I tried Bugs, but I did 
sneak a peek at one of like the corner of Tweety and then passed it on to somebody that I was sending a bottle to in Europe and I wanted them to be able to enjoy it knowing I would get sooner dibs on trying that and they keep emailing me like it's coming it's coming it's coming next week next week next week and I'm dying over here Tweety I got a little taste of and that is to me a really good spring scent like it's this um very chipper it's a very chipper fragrance it's very um uplifting a little bit on the lighter side which is why I think it's perfect for spring and I guess that's why they don't mind the delays and they actually were thinking ahead probably but that is like yes 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 I really like Tweety um, not every house of sillage is a hit with me. Some of them are just not my speed. I think they do amazing work and man, their bottles are so good. I almost forgot I still had this in my purse. I actually took Wednesday to my nail appointment yesterday for my nail girl, Michelle, to try this because she has such different taste as me. But, and I wanted to try it on her skin and I made her spray it at the beginning of the appointment so an hour later i could see how it developed on her and it's crazy it really keeps that pepper on her and she doesn't get those woods and resins too much it does go to a little bit of again that peppery spicy woody floral but she doesn't like the spicy she's a chanel au tendre and clean florals like dior privé florals she likes those clean kind of scents but I did notice while I was sitting there so many more details, like the pink and purple crystals going around. And just, this is such a pretty bottle. I just really like this bottle. But the scent's not my speed. I'm not into a spicy floor. It's just not my genre. Like, I can't, you know, you're not going to like every genre. But I feel like whoever likes is drawn to the cupcake design is not the same person that's going to be drawn to this fragrance and it's kind of a shame so i really hope those people try this because the people that go for these like sweet kind of fragrances girly this is definitely a different speed and i think this is going to be amazing on a man too but i just wish that they would try this one because it's such a good fragrance like i've said like rose 31 by lalabo um is there like Byredo, Rose of No Man's Land, something like that? Those are brands that I'm not, gra I don't gravitate to. I don't enjoy them. If you do, you're going to like that. It's just a different demographic is going to love that fragrance, not me. But anyway, let's move on to this list. So yeah, the, the Bugs and the Tweety. So the Bugs, uh, Tweety, let's do those notes first. Tweety is a top of bergamot, apple, and lemon. And yes, I get this very vibrant kind of feel from it. This like juicy, vibrant, sweet and tart. With a heart of lily, peony, rose, jasmine, peach. Again, this very vibrant kind of fruity, floral, very spring, like light flowers, like light pink flowers uh, in a base of musky and soft woody notes it's definitely a lighter fragrance i could get this you can't get everything off these like scent cards right like almost like in a new in a magazine those kind of peel things but you can kind of get the gist of it and i definitely got this vibrant fruity floral that just screamed spring and definitely my style now bugs I personally thought there was a missed opportunity with carrot or carrot seed or something, carrot oil, something. Carrot is very creamy, powdery too. Um, it's usually used as poor man's iris, but maybe that's why they didn't because House of Sea doesn't do anything poor man's, okay? Everything is the highest quality and that's probably why they didn't put carrot in there. But it would have been fun for marketing reasons, even if it was a little bit, right? Like how fun would that be? But the top notes are pink raspberry. Okay. All right. Raspberry, bergamot, chinus mole. I think that's some kind of shrub. And in a heart of jasmine rose whipped vanilla, in a base of golden amber patchouli alabanum sheer musk. This is kind of sounding like, um, like it might be like one of these where it's a vanilla-ish kind of fragrance, but goes a little fancy and then people are thrown for a loop. I mean, I kind of feel like, because this has a lot of those notes there, 
but an opening of this fruity raspberry. I don't know. I'm looking forward to that one. I'm really looking forward to it. And I didn't sneak a peek, did sneak a, sneak a peek of Tweety and was definitely sold on that one. Ella K. Now Ella K. I know has something up their sleeve that I'm looking forward to. I don't think I can talk about it. Obviously, a lot of these brands have something that launch around February, March. Um, and I've known they've had some stuff in the queue that I personally really liked. I can't wait to tell you about it. I will tell you more about that when I can tell you. Um, it shouldn't be very long, though. Like, I should be able to tell you in a couple of weeks. That I'm looking forward to. I saw Widian has Grenada. Now, I have recently fallen in love with Widian. Really looking forward to it. And this is in the, the blue, like, cities collection. See, I have New York. There's New York and there's London. And this is Grenada that I'm really interested in this. It sounds like it might lean a little masculine, but it sounds like a stunner. It is, yeah, a fresh, spicy, woody. Black pepper, pink pepper, raspberry, juniper, cinnamon, cedarwood, rose, in a base of oak moss. Usually when I see oak moss, it goes masculine. Amber, patchouli, labdanum, um, that sounds like amber, vanilla, labdanum. Oh, there's no benzoin though. Musk, vetiver. Yeah, it sounds like it's going masculine to me, um, but it sounds good. And they just make killer fragrances that I'm really curious about Grenada. I did pick up their previous newest release, which is launched really just a couple months ago, Lubin, and was blown away with this one. It's like strawberry juxtapositioned with oriental notes. Yeah, Lubin is like, it's stunner. This is in their more expensive collection. The blue collection is not as pricey as this um, luxury collection. But yeah, there. A black, the black opium has the La Parfum out. I haven't had a chance to check that out. That is also on my radar. Um, I haven't liked a lot of flankers to black opium, to be honest. I have bought a few and decluttered them. They just weren't for me. I got like that dragon fruit one and thought it was so cool. An hour later, after I bought it, like that day, and it was like, oh. I mean, I was waiting for my dinner takeout across the street, like in a mall across the pathway from Sephora. And I was like, I know exactly how to waste my time. Let me go check out the perfumes at Sephora. And in that time was like, yeah, I got to have this didn't even wait for dry down and it just didn't have longevity. I didn't, it was very anticlimactic that I just decluttered it. Um, I have the Blanche Nui. I have that one, which I really like, but the Love Parfum sounds like it's really heavy on the vanilla and I kind of want to check that one out. I do. I didn't tell you, but I did finally pick up the YSL Le Parfum also because it's heavy on the vanilla, but it definitely still has that lavender and orange blossom in here. Um, I like them all as they came out with flankers. I liked the original less, but I loved the original when it first came out. I was one of the very few people dancing around in my bathroom, like calling my friends, you got to try this. It's so amazing. It just felt like boss lady to me. It felt more serious, not date night. I liked it. But with each flanker, I liked each subsequent flanker more than the previous ending with La Parfum. So I did finally pick this up when there was like a Black Friday sale at Neiman's, I think is when I got this. And then I also picked up Devotion, which yeah, mad love, mad love. I haven't told you about this haul yet. I'm going on a tangent. Okay. okay. Um, Le La Parfum. I want to check that one out because I have this weird, unreliable relationship with Black Opium. I need to pop into my Sephora and have a sniff on that. I just, I don't want to blind buy it because they're not cheap. Like I, I'm so hard on the niche fragrances. Once they get over 150 to 200, I'm like, okay, I have expectations for you. Okay. I got, I have like standards. Meanwhile, I'm looking at these designers and they're 170, 180. And then let's add some tax and shipping. And I'm like, they are pretty much, you can smell the $200 yard, yard line with these guys. And I'm like, huh. And they just don't have the same longevity. Like I burn through designers, Go, turning back to my designers, I realized I burned through them. And this is why I was so frustrated with them when I was younger. I spent so much money on them and I would, they would be gone in a few hours, right? That 
I don't get the same longevity that I can pull from some of these niches that I absolutely love. And I think that's why I went down that rabbit hole years ago. But circling back, they are loves, but they last not, you know, I get my four hours, whatever. But I want to check out. Okay, back to Black Opium, La Parfum. I want to check it out. I don't trust. I haven't liked all the flankers. Also, another surprise, I've talked about this in Ken's, Christian Provenzano, what an amazing man, so blessed to be able to spend time with him too. Um, he has his collection that he had launched and he revamped it, redesigned things, has a new collection. And the little starlet for me was Roca that I fell in love with. It has this caramel note in there and it is the sweet candy one. You know, I like the sweets, right? I like fruity candy stuff. I don't go into the like, I don't fall as much in love with like the praline chocolate kind of realm coffees. Like I like my fruity candies. That's kind of my realm. And it, it has the caramel in it. And I really like that one. I am looking to get inventory of it in my store at the launch. They did a soft launch in Dubai. You guys have, several people have emailed me about it. It is coming. I think um within a month i think is when i should have it so it's coming don't worry and i will share that guy with you guys the launch isn't here in the united states yet but i'm lo definitely looking forward to it um he did a great job and i asked for a kit because i couldn't remember the other fragrances in the collection roca just like boom hit me over the head like caveman dragged me home that i couldn't focus on any of the others i just like tunnel vision to that one that I need to turn my attention to the others. They're definitely elegant, regal, um, definitely some killer ones for men and definitely kind of all over the map in that collection of different styles. But the Roca was just like the hit for the girls, you know, the girl, the people that watch me are going to love Roca. So that one should be coming also. And I'm looking forward to it. Ah, the Suspiro Maraschino, again, also, uh, Maraschino is going to be here, and I can tell you about it again, because I haven't smelled it in, like, three months, um, something like that, so I'm looking forward, and I, I might have that in my shop as well, so, yeah, Maraschino, yeah, there's three red ones in the queue, and I think they started with Maraschino, so I'm really excited about that, it's obviously a cherry fragrance, and... It will be, it's this velvet collection of Suspiro in a gorgeous like cherry red velvet, really hot looking. Fragrance Dubois. Okay, the one I fell in love with a year ago, Wild Orange, they ended up making an exclusive in London and completely broke my heart. Like, you're going to make me wait a year now to get this fragrance? So I'm looking forward to a global release of Wild Orange because that was my favorite Fragrance Dubois in a long time. Like, that one stole my heart too. I It was really hard to be excited about a couple of releases before it, having smelled that one and knowing that was the one to my heart. And then they had um, like the Fragrance Dubois AM and they had, what else they have? Yeah, they had Lovers, they had Voyage à Paris, but I knew Wild Orange was the one I really liked. So I can tell you now, I do like this one though. This They're very different styles, but I love, again, fruit, right? Like it's an orange, I, orange is like orange in like seven different facets and it goes through like the the like evolution of orange but it's just oh, it's not like the color orange here where there's an orange booziness it's very different it's more vibrant and with uh, it's uh, yeah so I am looking forward to that um if you're in London you're very lucky uh where is it it's is it the Nichols in Cambridge maybe where I, I can't remember because I can order from Selfridges and I can order from Harrods and they'll ship here, but not all those stores and it can be a little challenging. So I'm actually really looking forward to um, getting that one, to be honest. Those of you in the UK are actually lucky here. And Zaharoff. So Zaharoff, uh, we had the release of Orem, which was cool. And then he released um, really more of a men's fragrance. He's doing, I think he just started rolling it out now, but this has been on my watch list, is 
Helfetti Black Rose. He said that one day he wore signature rosé with the signature noir, and he was like, wow, this is really good. And I'm going to try that. Now, signature rosé is one of my favorites for men. This is one of my, this is my top three in his collection. Let me try layering this. So he said, now I love this rosé. It is a stunner of a rose that is so good on a man. Wow. Oh yeah, that's good. Now he said it just felt too safe. They tried to design it that way, layering them, but he said it just felt too safe and he wanted it to be just a touch edgier, darker like. So they ended up going back to square one and actually using that concept and from the, oh, it smells good in here. <laughs> it smells really good. And then just developing it from scratch with that same concept. Um, will I get it? Now, you know, I really like following all the Zaharoffs and getting them and reviewing them. Not only is George an amazing man, but I like his creations and I have fun with them, even though he has so far leaned masculine unisex. He's never really gone the feminine realm. He's always gone masculine and unisex, masculine, unisex. So I'm looking forward to something, but um, not only will I get it, I just got it tonight. I did order it on pre-order and let's see if I can show you this bottle. I'm not sure you can tell. Like this is actually really cool. And I like this burgundy interior in the box, but this is definitely very 3D black rose. And it reminds me, there's like this bar in Sag Harbor or East Hampton that this black rose Reminds me of, it's like a bar that has a lot of bands play there. I'm going to have to ask my friend Lon in, in Sag Harbor um, the name of that place, Wild Rose. Or This just reminds, like it struck me when I opened this box, it just took me back, which was crazy. But oh, it's rose. now it's obviously too soon for me to judge anything, but I did spray it on paper earlier. I mean, I love it. It's literally what you would envision the rose and and the spicy noir together it actually smells way better than layering those two where they kind of no trample and drown each other when you actually layer it right here man yeah if you take the the way he has the rose and the rosé and the spiciness and way too soon this is literally top notes but this is this is a winner i think this is this is this is good men's definitely masculine definitely not for the ladies but for the men i think that's a really good one and he's very original with his fragrances while still being mass appealing and i like that about him and also talking about really hoping he does something feminine he said on a live last night with tyler i had jumped on there and he said, and I had heard this before too, and he really was reminding me that he has a jasmine fragrance in the queue. That should be coming out, I think, this spring, spring, summer. So I'm really looking forward to that because he keeps alluding to femininity in it. That a man that likes wearing feminine fragrances, you can, if you like leaning into those florals, you're going to like it. And I know Tyler loves, loves jasmine. So I know that he's really jazzed about it. Um, he'll even wear them if they lean feminine. He just, he's in love with Jasmine. So, and I'm really excited because he's never really leaned into the feminine realm. Unisex, Citrine, um, the Coca Loco, Orum. Like he's leaned into unisex, but he's never really gone feminine that I'm really hoping he does because gosh, I love his creations. So yeah, that is the list. Those are the ones that I know about that I'm looking forward to. What other ones should I be looking at? If there's some others that you think I should be taking a peek at that I didn't talk about, let me know down below because I want to know your thoughts on this too. Um, and oh, I managed to resurrect and, and find, I, I was able to save and find my footage from cans. I really thought it was lost when my devices crashed and I had a reboot to factory. I couldn't use a backup. It was, I mean, long story short, because I wasn't on Wi-Fi enough for things to back up. I was taking so much video footage. It couldn't back up to the cloud because I didn't have Wi-Fi enough. And I was filling everything with this footage that 
it got jammed up. And if I were to go back to that, it would crash again. So he told me I had to just go back to factory and gosh, I was so bummed but I did manage to get that. So I'm going to take some time and try to narrate, to seam that together and make a fun vlog because it'll be fun for me too, to be able to relive that because I had so much fun on that trip. So much fun. I did share quite a bit on Instagram, but gosh, I really, really enjoyed it way more than the Milan trip. Like I just, and I had a lot of vacation time there. So it was just so much fun shopping and enjoying in the perfect weather. And it was it was one that went down on the books for me. So yeah, um, I will see you guys in the next time. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.